Doing SEO for your Shopify store is time consuming and complicated. Trust me, I know. However, it's not something you can ignore if you want to increase your organic traffic and finally get off a paid ads hamster wheel. In this video, I'm going to break down how to set up one of the most important aspects of SEO that's honestly not very well talked about. And without it, you don't stand any chance of ranking first on Google and ahead of your competitors. I'm talking about tiered link build. Link building is one of the most complex concepts in SEO. There's so many types of links to build, millions of websites to build them from, and even tiers of links to consider. Now, if you're asking yourself what tiers of links means, you're not alone. So I'll start by answering that question. What are tiered backlinks? Then I'll get into when you should use them and how to build them. When most people talk about or think about backlinks, they think of tier one links. A tier one link looks just like this. One website links directly to your website. Pretty straightforward. It's the most commonly talked about backlink and it makes sense. The more websites that link to yours generally means the better you'll rank, right? Well, kind of depends. What about the websites that link to that website or the websites that link to the websites that link to the websites that link to you? Now things get a bit more complicated. The two situations I just described are what are known as tier two and tier three links. Here's what a tier two link looks like. Website two links to website one, which then links to your website. And let's take a step back even. Tier three, website three links to website two, links to website one, which eventually links to your website at the end of the chain. If you're a big abused, don't be. This may be the first time you're hearing about tiered link building. I actually didn't hear about tiered link building for the first year I did SEO. I'm gonna explain why you wanna use these tiered systems, which should help clarify a few things. Also, before we get any further, tier links are not nearly as expensive as tier one backlinks. Don't worry, these are much cheaper and easier to build. So let's start with tier two. Why do you need them? The most common applications of tiered link building are for anyone who is guest posting, building niche edits, landing PR links or unlinked mentions. We're gonna look at each of these one by one and break down the value of tier two links for each of these. Guest posts. These are the most widely used link building tactic in the world. Pretty simple. You reach out to other site owners in your niche. You offer to write a blog or article on their website. It also contains a backlink to your site, plus probably a few other links to you know medical journals or even other pages on their site. This is a tier one link and generally it involves a small fee depending on the website. That can be anywhere from one to three hundred dollars depending. Write the article, pay the fee. Great. Now you've got a backlink. There's a little known flaw to guest post. If your guest post doesn't receive any organic traffic or even worse, it never gets indexed at all, that backlink is completely useless to you. So you just paid a stranger a few hundred dollars on the internet for a backlink that doesn't add any tangible value to your site. Pretty much just got robbed. Now this is where tiered links come in. The more links that point at a page, generally speaking, the faster it will get indexed and two, the higher it'll rank. By building a ton of tier two links at that guest post, you immediately make it more valuable to your site. Basically, you're building a ton of guest posts to your guest posts. Essentially, is what's happening. A ton of links is relative. This really depends on your budget, the website, the tiered system. A ton could be four or five. It could also mean 50 to 100. I've done both, I've done less, I've done more. I'll start with how you build these in a bit, but now let's get on to niche edits. Niche edits are essentially the same type of backlinks as guest posts. Rather than writing a new piece of content for another site, you simply find an already existing page on that website that has a suitable anchor which can link back to your website. You may have also heard of these referred to as link insertions. They're the same thing, okay? Again, a tier one link as long as they're pointing to your site. A few benefits of link insertion or niche edits compared to guest posts, in my opinion, you just have to find a page and an anchor combination, not write a 1,000 word post. So it's faster, usually. Publishers generally charge less, on average 50 to 25% in my experience, so it's cheaper. And these pages likely already receive traffic, so they're more effective off the bat, plus they probably already have internal links pointing at them. Great. What if that page that you put the niche edit or the link insertion on only ranks on page two, or it only gets a few organic visitors each month. Easy. Now you power it with tier two links. Now, all of a sudden, after you built five, 10, 15 tiered links at that niche edit, now it ranks on page one and it gets tens, hundreds of organic visitors a month, maybe even a thousand, depending. This is going to multiply the value of your backlink, right? It's so much more valuable now with tiered links than it was when it was just a niche edit. On to the last use case, PR links and unlinked mentions. PR links are kind of the holy grail for SEO right now, especially Forbes. <laughs> it's great to see your website mentioned on sites like MSN, Yahoo, Forbes, Shopify, things like that especially when they come with a nice do follow link. Again, if they're linking back to your website directly, they are a tier one link. But just because you have a do follow link from a site like MSN doesn't mean you'll automatically rank number one the next day. Yes, it's a good start. No, it's not the end. MSN publishes tens of thousands of articles each year and they're not all equally valuable. Some of them don't receive any traffic, which again renders your backlink pretty useless, even if it's on MSN. If you manage to land a do follow link on a site like MSN, the very next thing you should do almost every time is build tier two links at that specific URL. Don't build them at msn.com, build them at the actual URL that your link is on. The same goes if you only land a no follow link or even an unlinked mention. These tier one links are generally considered pretty useless even as a no follow, but if you pepper that MSN article with tier two links to quite literally force it to the top of Google, you will make Google pass actual value and it will pretty much not ignore the no follow, but it'll actually pass tangible value to your site, even if it's unlinked. Why? Because it's on a powerful domain, it receives plenty of organic traffic, and now it has plenty of links endorsing it, which are your tier two links. This should provide enough context for tier one and tier two backlinks. Now 
let's take it a step further. Tier three, do you need them? You might think that tier two links are enough, and in many cases, they are. But if those tier two links don't receive many links or much traffic, they don't add any value to your tier one links, and again, you're back to square one. No value at all. Tier three links are a bit of an insurance policy to make sure the whole chain functions as intended. In almost every case, your tier three links will be no follow. That's totally fine. You don't need them to pass a ton of value. Your goal is simply to direct Google's attention to the tier two links, which point to the tier one links, and again, at the end of the chain, point to your site. Because these tier links are so far removed from your site, they don't need to be of the same pedigree as tier one or even tier two links. You should quality assure every single link you build directly to your site. That is a widely accepted practice in SEO. That's what we do. That's what any SEO worth their salt does. If you're building tier three links, they're not going directly to your site. So you don't need to QA them as diligently. You should definitely take a look at them, but you don't need to spend hours agonizing over the whole thing. These are the most common form of tier three links. Social profiles, forums and discussion boards, blog comments, and directories. In extremely rare cases, you will come across SEOs who build tier four and even tier five links. Personally, I rarely do this. I do it on personal sites. I've only ever done up to tier four though. On to the $100 question, how to build tier two and tier three backlinks. As I said earlier, these are far less expensive than tier one. I'd also like to point out that these links are far less quality than your tier one links, right? I just talked about that. You don't want to build low quality or spammy backlinks directly to your website. You may be the subject of a manual action or get hit by the next algorithm update. Both are obviously bad. However, because you're building them to another site, you can build a little bit lower quality links, which will enable you to build more for less. Because there's now a barrier or essentially a degree of separation, which essentially is another website in between yours and the actual tier one backlink, you've kind of got a bit of protection from Google. Your best bet for building tier backlinks, especially if you're new to them, is a platform like Fiverr. I've said on this channel, I never built backlinks from Fiverr. I've definitely built tiered backlinks from Fiverr and it's worth a shot. For larger teams, you know, if you're building like a PBN or you've got a massive team, you could build an in-house team of VAs. You could build your own PBN. I know plenty of people who do this. It's pretty effective as well. I want to talk about Fiverr. I've told you not to buy the 50 backlinks for $25 package on Fiverr. This is true. If you're building them to your website, it is pretty much a death wish if you're going to build these links to your site. Um, I would never do that. But building into another website, let them rip, right? You're putting another website in the way instead of yours, and you're still getting value out of it. Within a few days, you'll have 50 to 100 plus tier two links pointing at your soon to be powerful guest post, niche edit, PR link, or on link mention, whatever you're focusing on. Now, I mentioned this earlier on MSN, do not simply build them to the root domain of the guest post. Build them directly to the specific URL. This is incredibly important. Then you can buy another set of 50 links, Fiverr, Upwork, wherever you shop for links and point these at your tier two links. Now you're all set up with tier three links. Make sure you don't buy the same package for tier two and tier three. Diversify the kinds of links you're building. For tier three, you want to use like social profiles, guest comments, things like that. For tier two, you want to actually have like legitimate websites pointing at your tier one. My recommendation for both tiers is to vary your anchor text just as you will with tier one backlinks. Here are a few variations to use. For tier two, mix of branded and contextual anchors. Tier three, plain URL, CTA like read more or like here and contextual anchors again. Because you're building so many of them, it's going to be harder to control the anchors at scale, especially if you're using like VAs or you're outsourcing it. I wouldn't get too caught up on anchor distribution or anchor variation, but it should be fine. Once you've done this, you've turned a single guest post from totally worthless into one of the most viable backlinks that your site has. Now, for the ethical dilemma. In order to increase the value of your website, you're building low quality tiered backlinks at other websites, potentially placing them at risk for a penalty, manual action, or even a total loss of traffic. Is this morally bankrupt? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I think that's totally up to you. I have a few rules of thumb that I kind of abide by when I build tiered links. If I have ever interacted with the founder or an operator of a site directly, I will not build tiered links at the website. They were nice enough to give me a link and build a relationship, so I won't put them at risk. Talk about a site like MSN, Forbes, Yahoo. You are totally green light to build as many tiered links as you want at those websites. Um, you could build hundreds, even thousands of them. They have tens of millions of backlinks. In the scheme of things, 100 tiered links is not going to make a massive difference to their site's reputation, but it will have a ma major impact on your site's reputation, which is a good thing, right? It'd be like trying to take down a tank with a water gun. If publishers refuse to build internal links to the guest post, so like let's say you reach out to someone, you agree on a fee, and you send them a guest post, and you know they say, great, it's published, and you ask them to add a few internal links, and they say no, well, you know, now you're gonna have to build tier links, otherwise that blog is never gonna get indexed. Or maybe they're unnecessarily rude during our email conversations, whatever that may occur. I've had a lot of crazy conversations about building backlinks. If either of those two things happen, I will build a few tiered links to the guest post, right? Not if you do 100, I'm not gonna destroy the site because I still want the value to go to my site. Maybe five to 10. Again, five to 10 new backlinks are not gonna impact your site all that much and I'll still get a considerable amount of value for my site. For reference, we build tier two and tier three links for several of our guest posts, niche edits, PR links, and unlink mentions. I don't know a lot of agencies that do this simply just because it's so intricate and honestly, most times brands just wanna see the tier one links. So good chance they're building them, maybe not talking about them. I am far more of the belief that quality is more important than quantity when it comes to link building, right? So we may build less tier one backlinks for brands directly to their sites. However, every tier one backlink we build is actually valuable. 
rather than half of them being an orphan page and receiving no traffic or links or whatever else. This is the biggest reason why we build 90% of our backlinks in-house because we can manage the whole process. If you outsource your link building to a link building agency, chances are they're not going to build tiered links. Again, this is not very common practice at scale. And I've tested a few link building agencies for my own personal sites and very often, <laughs> I get a bunch of links which look great on the surface and then you look a little deeper and those guest posts or niche edits have no traffic, they've got no referring domains, which pretty much means they're useless to me. So, you know, I paid a couple thousand dollars for essentially nothing, right? It's part of the testing process, but that's where it's at. So, wrapping up here. Start with tier one links, direct backlinks directly to your site, right? This is the fastest way to get noticed by Google. As you start to scale, move on to tier two and tier three links, which are strategically built to amplify the value of your tier one backlinks, right? They're particularly beneficial for guest posts, niche edits, and PR links, as well as unlinked mentions. Guest posts, for instance, benefit from tier two links to increase indexing speed and ranking, like I talked about. Niche edits are pretty much the same, and PR links also pick up some value with additional tier two links. If you run like press syndication, this is kind of the same thought process as that. And again, tier two links are great in many cases, like for most of the brands we work with, tier two links are enough. Tier three links are more of an insurance policy if we're in a really competitive niche, or we're just trying to diversify the whole kind of link profile and not get in trouble with Google of any kind. Again, they're way cheaper, they're way more cost effective than tier one links because they're on lower quality sites. Again, it's fine because you are not building them to your site. You are building them to other websites. If you're doing this all the time, yes, it's possible that Google could catch up with you. Personally, I've never been penalized by Google and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Again, most brands aren't doing this. Most agencies aren't doing this. So if you're doing it, you're probably going to win your niche as long as you take care of your on-page and your technical side of SEO too. If you want to rank first on Google ahead of your competitors, go watch this full guide I made that breaks down everything we do at my SEO agency for Shopify brands. And if you want to have a chat with me, discuss SEO for your brand, book a call below. Peace.